A couple of weeks ago here in Brisbane, I attended an annual camera fair. Only happens once a year, yet I don't feel like I was very well prepared. So after I left the event, I wrote down 10 things to take when you go film camera hunting. Whether it's a camera fair, or whether you're going around someone's house who's selling something on Marketplace, here are 10 things you should consider taking with you when you go buy cameras. So the first thing you want to take, especially to a camera fair, is a nice thin line sort of bag. So here is my bag here. It doesn't actually look very thin line here on camera, but this is quite thin line compared to my usual camera bag, which is a Airport Essentials from Think Tank. Uh, so that's quite big. It carries about five or six, you know, decent sized cameras. This is quite thin line. It sort of hugs my back and it's not very obtrusive. So when I'm walking around, I'm turning around, I'm not whacking people with my bag. So yeah, a nice little backpack like this is a must. And inside that backpack, I had a couple of these carry bags. This is one from Coles, I think. So yeah, a couple of carry bags, because you never know, maybe you'll buy stuff that doesn't fit in the backpack, or maybe you'll buy so much stuff that your backpack will be full. Carry bags are very light and they're always good to have on hand. Next on my list of must have things to take when camera hunting are batteries. Now I buy a lot of point and shoots and a lot of cameras that are dependent on batteries. So here is what I would take next time. I took some of these to the Brisbane Camera Fair, but not all. So I would definitely take a more comprehensive range of batteries next time I go. So the first one is the old AA battery. You can get these anywhere. These are great. A lot of older point and shoots use these either to power the camera or to power the flash. The same with the AAAs, always good to have two or three of these ready to go. The next one you probably want to take is the CR123A battery, used in a lot of point and shoots. So yeah, definitely get one of those. More expensive one you also should have is the CR2. The CR2 is usually used in more fancy kind of point and shoots generally. And it's always good to have a couple of these in case you find like a Contax G camera, because they take two of these CR2 ones. And there's also a couple of oddball batteries. So this, this one here called the C, I can't read it, CRP2 battery, which is a really good one to have. And also the 2CR5, which is um, a very similar looking battery to this, but I think it's sort of shorter. So they're all these sort of oddball batteries are really good to have. So dig them out of your cameras, make sure they work and take them along because you just never know when you're gonna need one. One of the cameras I bought at the Brisbane Camera Fair actually took an oddball battery and I was lucky in that the guy selling the cameras had a little jar and he handed me one to test it and that's the only reason I bought it. So I was very grateful for that. But next time I would be much better prepared. If you like Polaroid cameras, also grab one of these. This is an empty Polaroid cartridge. After it shoots out the eight photos, it still has a charge in those batteries. So take one of these along if you want to sort of test a Polaroid camera. Of course, there's no guarantee that just because you put this in and it seems to work, it'll be okay. But generally, a lot of the 600 series cameras, those rigid body 600 series cameras, generally, if you put one of these in, a fresh sort of cartridge or a fresh-ish cartridge in, and it fires up and it works, generally they're pretty good in my experience. So if you're a Polaroid lover, make sure you take an empty cartridge with you. The third thing you wanna take with you when you go film camera hunting is spare film. Yes, this can be used for a couple of different reasons. So the first reason is this, when you buy a film camera, you put a battery in, you sort of test it with the battery to make sure everything's working, you then wanna put a roll of film in. You wanna make sure that when you put the film in, the camera is actually taking the film up and everything's working okay. Especially with more automatic modern cameras and point and shoots, sometimes you know there can be an issue when you put a roll of film in. Maybe it doesn't wind on properly, maybe it comes up with an E message or a zero error or something like that. So it's always very worthwhile to take some spare film with you. You can either take an old dummy roll that you use to test cameras, or you can take a fresh roll like this nice little Cine Steel 50D here. And the bonus is that if you buy any cameras at the camera fair, you can go out shooting afterwards. If it's a beautiful day, get out there, put some fresh film in and get out there and shoot some images. The fourth thing you want to take with you is a working camera. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why would you take a working camera to a camera fair? But there's a couple of different reasons here. The first thing is you might want to take photos either at the fair or after or beforehand. If it's a beautiful day, you know, take a camera along with you and make a day of it and take some cool photos. I actually was kicking myself the day of the Brisbane Camera Fair. It was kind of raining and overcast, like, much like it is here today. And I thought, oh, I'm not gonna bother taking a camera with me. The Camera Fair is about 40 minutes drive from me. 
As I was about halfway there, sun come out, it was a beautiful sunny day over the other side of town. The sun was shining, the sky was blue, and I was absolutely kicking myself that I didn't have a camera with me. I thought, well, if I don't buy any cameras today, I've kind of got a wasted opportunity here. I should have brought a camera with me. So always take that film camera with you. Make sure it's loaded up with film and ready to go. And the other thing is that it can be a conversation piece. Quite often at the fair I was at, you know, you saw people with a camera around their neck and people having conversations about the different cameras they had. So, you know, taking a spare camera with you can be a great conversation starter. The fifth thing you might want to take with you when you're out film camera hunting is screwdrivers. Yes, these can be very, very handy. So I know that some of the cameras I have, especially cameras made in the mid 80s, they really tried to make it hard for you to change the battery. So some of the Canon cameras, for example, to take the battery out and change the battery, you've got, you need a screwdriver and you need to unscrew the side panel of the camera which is really, really annoying. So always make sure you have a couple of different screwdrivers with you, you know, different sizes, all these tiny little mini ones, they're pretty good, that's what I use. And they're really invaluable when you go camera hunting if you wanna take that panel off to make sure there's no battery corrosion, put a spare battery in there and make sure the thing fires up. The sixth thing is a torch. Yes, or a flashlight as my American friends would call it. These can be invaluable if you're somewhere indoors and you really want a good look at a camera. Sometimes the lighting isn't as bright as it could be. And if you're taking open, you know, opening up a camera and you're looking at the battery compartment, you, a torch is really good because you can really have a good look inside there to make sure there's no corrosion around the battery terminals. I usually just use the torch on my iPhone, but you can use, you know, a standalone torch if you want, a standalone flashlight. Make sure you have one of them. It can be very handy indeed. The seventh thing you want to take with you when you go film camera shopping is cash. Yes, at a lot of these events, Cash is king. A lot of people there at the show, at the camera fair in Brisbane, they did not accept credit cards. You had to pay in cash. Now, I only took about $250 cash with me. Uh, that was a deliberate ploy on my behalf. I really didn't want to spend too much money. I still have quite a lot of cameras here at home I want to sell. So I didn't want to spend like $1,000 or something ridiculous like that. So I sort of limited myself to $250. And I did pick up two good cameras I'll show you right at the end of this video. Number eight on my list is a credit or debit card. Now I did actually take uh, credit and debit cards with me to the camera fair. A lot of the vendors, like I said, were not accepting anything other than cash, which was kind of good for me because I really didn't want to spend too much money. If I really wanted to, I could have left the camera fair, gone to a cash machine, got more cash out and bought more stuff. I did think about that for about 10 minutes, but in the end I decided, no, I've got enough cameras, I don't need any more, I'm just being greedy. It is always good to have a backup of a credit or debit card because you never know when the deal of the century would strike. For example, just say there was an X-Pan there for like, I don't know, $1,500 cash with a couple of different lenses and the center filter and all that kind of stuff in pristine condition. I would have run to the cash machine, got more money out to buy that thing. Uh, luckily for me though, uh, well maybe unluckily for me, that wasn't the case and I didn't need to go and get any more money out. But still, it's always good to have a backup if you do see a really amazing deal. Number nine on my list is my smartphone. I can't show you my iPhone because I'm using it to record this. But an iPhone is a really good, or a smartphone is a really good thing to have for a couple of different reasons. The first thing is you can look up different models of a camera. If you're not familiar with them, you can look them up and find out information about them. You can find out how they work, what kind of batteries they take, what you need to look for, how to use them, all of that kind of stuff. The other thing you can use your smartphone to do is look up eBay and see how much the camera you're looking at is going for on eBay. And that is just, of course, a guide. Usually at camera fairs, a lot of people will sell them sort of below eBay rates because of course with eBay, you're paying quite a premium to actually sell on the platform. But it is really good to get on eBay and sort of have a look at what kind of condition the cameras are in and what price they're selling for. And then you can assess the cameras in front of you and work out whether it's a good price or not. And the 10th thing that you should take along to a camera fair, if you have any, is your merch. Yes, if you've produced any postcards or you produced any zines, 
definitely take them along. It's a really good talking point. You can sort of show other people what you've produced and it's a really good talking point. You know, perhaps you could swap them, give them away, sell them. It's up to you really. I've also got these really cool stickers that I give away to people as well when they buy zines off me. So it's really good to have these sort of things, again, as a talking point or, you know, just as something to trade with people. It's really fun to be able to do that at Camera Fairs and sort of show your work off. So there you go, there's my list of 10 things that you should take when you are film camera hunting. What did I miss? Did I get these right? Did I get them wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Now I've also got, before I show you the two items I actually picked up at the camera fair, I've got a bonus five tips for you about attending camera fairs. Here we go. The first tip is get there early. So this year's camera fair opened at 10.30, it said on the publicity. And I actually said to my wife, we went last year, and I had a stand there selling cameras and zines and all that kind of stuff. I said to my wife, that's odd, it's 10.30 this year. I could have sworn it was 10 o'clock last year. So I knew that parking was pretty difficult around that area where it is in Brisbane. So I turned up about 10 to 10, parked up, and I walked around the corner at 10 o'clock. And I'm thinking, okay, I'm half an hour early. There should be quite a queue of people here. I turned up and there was no one in the queue and I'm like, what's happened? Have I, have I come on the wrong day or something? I was really paranoid. And all of a sudden I realized there was a few people milling around inside and the gate was open. And so that actually opened up the camera fair over half an hour early. Uh, so that was really good because I was in the camera fair with there's probably about 20 to 30 sellers there. And there's only about 20 or 30 people walking around at 10 o'clock. And I was able to get right up to the tables have a look what was there and get a really good idea of any bargains going. And that's how I managed to blow all of my money within the first five minutes. But I'll tell you about that in a minute. Second tip, if you're looking for a particular camera, make sure you do your research, make sure you know how they work, what kind of batteries they take, what to look for, how much they go for on eBay or on, on Facebook Marketplace. You really need to do your research. You don't want to get into a situation where you pass up a bargain because you didn't realize that it was a really good buy, or perhaps you, know, you don't want to get in a position where you get home from the camera fair and you realize that you've actually overpaid for the camera. So try and do as much research as you can about the camera you're interested in, all the models, all the variants. Make sure you do that before you go. My third tip, if you see a camera you're interested in but you want to find out some more information, make sure you hold onto it in your hand. So, you know, stand at the stand, have the camera in front of you, don't put it in your pocket or anything, they'll think you're stealing it. But, you know, have it there in your hand, have a good grip on it, and with your other hand, you know, look up information about it, look up how much it's going for, what things to look for, what battery it takes, all that kind of stuff. I actually read a couple of accounts at recent camera fairs where people were looking up on their phone how much a camera was worth or whether it was a good deal or not. They decided it was a good deal and they went to go and buy it and someone else had already grabbed it. So if you see a camera and you think you want it, make sure you have it in your hand. Don't put it down until you're sure you don't want it. My fourth bonus tip is don't be afraid to ask the seller questions about the camera. A lot of the sellers at these fairs are very knowledgeable. They will have repaired the camera or done a CLA on the camera, or they'll know something about it, perhaps how it works or something like that. So don't be afraid to ask them questions. They might have be a treasure trove of knowledge just waiting for you to ask them about it. Of course, some vendors don't actually know anything about the cameras. They might just say, I don't know, you'll have to look it up online, but it certainly doesn't hurt to ask. And my fifth bonus tip is test the camera as much as possible while you're there at the stand before you hand over the money. So this is where your research can come in handy. Make sure that it's winding on, make sure the shutter is firing. When the battery goes in, make sure everything, it's doing everything that it should do. You don't wanna sort of get home from the camera fair and work out that actually, I don't think this camera works like it should. A lot of camera sellers at these events, you know, they don't have shops. So if you did have something wrong with the camera when you got home, you may not know how to contact them or even who they are. And there's no guarantees with these sales quite often, unless you're buying off a reputable store and you can go to the store after the events, you know, you're sort of buying it then and there based on your judgment of the camera. So try and test it as much as possible and be happy with it before you hand over your hard earned cash. So as I said earlier in this video, I actually blew all of my cash within five minutes of arriving, which was kind of crazy because then I spent the next 45 minutes walking around looking at stuff I had no cash to buy. Of course, I could have gone and got more money out, but I decided I have enough camera stuff, I don't need any more. So I was actually very well controlled that day. 
So I saw a camera in a little pouch and I wondered what it was. I thought at first it could be a Canon Sure Shot Sleek. Of course, I picked one of those up recently uh, when my wife went to the UK. I picked one off ebay.co.uk and I've got that here in my collection. So when I saw this little camera on the table in a pouch, I thought it might be the same one, but no, it's an even smaller camera. It is the Ricoh R1. Look at this, this thing is absolutely tiny. It's a really nice, beautiful little camera. And the funny thing was, the night before the camera fair, I'd actually bid on a Ricoh GR1V camera. It was basically a pristine camera, brand new in box, had the filters, had the hood, had everything. I missed out on the bidding at something like, it was in the UK, so I missed out on the bidding at, I think it was around 800 pounds or something crazy like that, which is a lot of money. So when I woke up in the morning and I saw that I missed out on the GR1V, I was kind of relieved because I thought, I don't actually have 800 pounds at the moment. I would have had to put it on the credit card and tried to sell some stuff to pay it off. But so I was kind of at peace with the fact that I didn't get the GR1V. And then I go to the camera fair and literally the first camera I pick up is a Ricoh R1. This is kind of like the consumer or the baby brother line of that GR1V sort of line of cameras. It's a really nice camera, it's really thin. The only issue with this is of course, I'm, I know that you're gonna guess, is the LCD. The LCD there, uh, you know, it does have some sort of blank spots and you can't really read what all the modes are. You can sort of read enough to know what you're doing if you look at the manual or look online. But yeah, the LCD, like a lot of older cameras, the LCD isn't working very well. I've really enjoyed shooting with this so far. I've probably shot almost an entire roll and um, it's just a camera that I pop in my pocket. It's so small and tiny. I, I really love this camera already and I can't wait to see the images I've taken with it. Hopefully I'll finish that roll soon and I'll bring you a review of it right here on this channel. The Ricoh R1 cost me $100 Australian, which is around 68 US dollars, which even with the LCD that you can't read very well, I still think is a really good deal. Now, as I was talking about the Ricoh R1 with the guy selling the cameras, I sort of looked down and right in the middle of the table, I saw this name Yashka. And I thought, is it Yashka point and shoot? And all of a sudden, you know, it was, everything was in slow motion and my hand sort of went to go grab it. And I grabbed it. I couldn't believe that it was people milling around the stand that actually been where I was about 30 seconds earlier and no one had seen this and picked it up. This is an expensive camera. These go for, you know, four to 500 US dollars. This one was only 135 Australian dollars, which is around 92 US dollars. So for that price, I was sort of looking at it thinking, gosh, I hope this works. You know, I haven't actually got a battery. I worked out that it took a two CR5 battery and I didn't have one with me. I was kicking myself. I asked the guy selling the cameras if he had one. Luckily in his jar of batteries, he had one, put it in, fired it up. It all worked fine and I was over the moon. And so I handed the guy $235 for the Ricoh R1 and this Yashica T3D and I was very, very happy and almost all of my money was gone within five minutes of getting into the camera fair. So this is also a lot of fun to shoot with. It has got that NA scope, which is, I think it renamed the Super Scope in later cameras, but here, this one, it's called the NA scope. Um, I really enjoyed using this so far. It is a little bit chunky, but I do really like it. And again, look out for a review of this camera coming up very soon on this channel. Now, the only other thing that I bought at the camera fair was film. Yes, I was silly. I did not take a spare camera with me. I did not take any spare film with me. And I really wanted to buy some film to load into the R1 to make sure that it was taking up the film okay and it was working. So I bought a two pack of C200. It was 30 Australian dollars, which is just over 20 US dollars which was a little bit expensive, uh, a little bit more expensive than some other companies, but hey, like, it's not particularly fun staying at a camera fair all day, so I understand that the pricing might have been a bit more than usual. I also picked up these two Film Never Die films. So Film Never Die is a company in Melbourne and they sell different types of film and they sell these two cinema films. This is cinema film with the Remjet removed, I believe. So you've got the Sora 200 speed one here and you've got the Umi 800 speed film. You've come in these really nice little, you know, recyclable kind of cardboard canisters and the film comes out. You also get like a DX code there along with the film, which is really nice. And I really like the branding there. 
So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm really looking forward to shooting these and seeing what the results are like. So again, I think one of these was $22 Australian and one was $25 Australian. So you know, not the cheapest film in the world, but again, I like to support you know, film people who either re-spool film or, or remake film or rebadge film. It's always good to have different options and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to shooting these. So there you go, there are my 10 things that you must take when you are out film camera hunting and also my five bonus tips when you attend a camera fair. What did you think of the tips? What did you think of the items you need to take? Let me know if I missed anything or got anything wrong and also let me know what you think of my two camera pickups. Are you impressed with the Ricoh R1 and the Yashica T3D? Hello, hello. You can't, no one can see you, look. Look, here we go. Hello, this is my friend Marshall. Oh yes, he's a very pretty. Look at that. Oh yes, you're a good boy. You were very good during filming. You weren't very, very noisy, were you? No, you weren't. Good boy.